All right, so I asked you guys to solve this. The first step is to use the addition property to m separate things. And if it helps, label the type of terms you have. This is a variable, constant, constant. So since this is the only variable term that I have, he's going to stay on the left side, and I want to move the constant to the other side. Don't do anything with this coefficient until the very, very end. Because if you start dividing by 3, or you're not going to subtract 3, or add 3, or do anything with that, just, just don't. Don't do anything with the coefficient until the end. Trust me. I'm not a doctor, but trust me. So how do I move the 44 to the other side? I'm going to add 44 to both sides. So this gives me 0. That's what I want. On the left side, all that I have is 3y. What's on the right side? 57. Now that I have this, how do I get y by itself? How do I get rid of the 3? Divide. Now, now, I want you to back up. Everything that we're doing here is that we are undoing. We're undoing what's been done. So the opposite of subtracting 44 is adding 44, yes? And what's understood to be between the 3 and the y? Multiplication. What's the opposite of multiplying? Dividing. So that's why I divide by 3, because that will undo multiplication by 3, right? So then we have y equals... You do the long division, you get what? Now here's something that you might think about doing. You might not. You could see 57 over 3 as being 60 minus 3 over 3. Why did I choose 60 minus 3? Why am I doing that? Because that's 60 over 3 minus 3 over 3. I can do 60 over 3 faster than I can do 57 over 3. So that gives me 20 minus 1, and that gives me 19. That's another way of doing it. Of course, it may be too crazy for some of you, but again, that's how I roll. Questions about y equals 19? No tienes una pregunta? Or for, for Bryce out there, ¿es que le de question? No. Bon. Let's try this one. How about I have 5 plus 6c equals negative 31. speak one language. I spit others. Bits and pieces. Now here, this is a constant term. This is a variable. This is a constant. Again, I only have one variable term, right? So since he's the only variable term, move the other stuff over. So how do I move this 5? No, that's a good question. Because a lot of students will choose to add. What is the sign of the 5 here right now? It's understood to be a positive, right? And the opposite of having a positive 5 is a negative 5. Keep in mind that this 5 is disconnected from the variable term because of the addition between them. So here, positive 5 and minus 5 become 0. I have 6c <coughs> is equal to what? Negative 36. And once we have it here, this is just like those single step problems that we did before. How do I get C by itself? I don't want six of them, I just want one, so I do what? Divide, Divide by the coefficient of C, which is six. C is what? Negative six. What do you guys think? You were hearing the change coming out of the vending machine, weren't you? That's like going to Vegas. Sometimes you just put your dollars in there and get a refund. You go ting, 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 ting. Yeah, Have you been to Vegas? Oh, dude, I had a honeymoon in Vegas. You kidding me?
<clears throat> yeah, a lot of stories to tell you, but not while I'm being recorded. <laughs> All right, so how about 15 equals 1 plus 7x? I'm making these way too easy, I think. Two. Two? Five! <laughs> We're shouting out numbers now, I guess. Let's get the variable by itself, right? This is the only variable term, so what should I do first? get rid of what's on its side over here, which is a 1. So I subtract 1 on both sides. So then I have what? 14, 14 equals, OK. I divide by the coefficient of the variable, which is 7. So that tells you that x equals how much? x equals 2. questions about that one. It's just like all the other problems, right? You get, have to get your variable term on one side and your constants on the other. Then, if necessary, if you don't have just a plain 1x, you divide by the coefficient and you're done. Yes, Valerie? Why was it minus 1? When I look at this, I need to get rid of that positive 1, right? So I have to subtract 1. This gives me Zero, that zeroes that out. No, look at the problem that we have above here. This was a 5, right? Mm -hmm. So to move it to the other side, I had to do the opposite, so I had to subtract 5. It doesn't matter what side I'm moving it to, I'm going to do the opposite of what I see there. So this is understood to be a positive 1, right? So how do I get rid of that positive 1? What's the additive inverse? Negative one. But I'm saying, like, why did you pick one? Why, why can't it be 15? Like okay, why, why can't it be, why am I not moving the 15? Why am I moving the one? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is a constant term. That's a constant. This is a variable, right? Since this is the only variable that I have, I'm going to keep him on the right side, which means anything else that's on the right side needs to go. If I move the 15, then I'm not going to have anything on the left side. And it gets really weird, and students usually make mistakes that way. So since this is the only variable term that I have, move the 1 over to get them on opposite sides. Don't put all of the terms on the same side. If you do, it's not going to work out well for you for what we're doing with these equations. Does that answer the question? Yeah, so it's because the variable term and the only variable term you have is on the right side, that's why you want to move the one over.